It's a very simple mindfulness. It's really just helping people become more aware of what's happening right now in this moment. Most of us spend our time in our heads, thinking about the past, worrying about the future. And it's actually a skill to just become fully present with what's happening here and now. I think uh, mindfulness changed me a lot. I can actually um, take me time just to think about what I'm feeling or what my, what my body is doing when I'm feeling the stress. It has made me more confident and improved my well-being and made me accept things the way they are. Oh, it's changed me an awful lot ever since I started it. Sent me tremendously. Yeah, that's not a word I use then a lot anyway. Take a breath in and then let it go. We'll be coming back to the group. But thank you for your patience. Mindfulness for Life has been created by a team including people with a learning disability or autism. Its strength comes from the fact that it includes not only an expert from mindfulness who came from our local mental health trust, but experts by experience who together created the programme. I think it is very important to, to do stuff with, uh, with a team uh, so we can so we can uh, challenge ourselves to, to teach. Their ideas, what they've experienced, what's been good in their lives, what hasn't been so good in their life. They have been able to use all of that to inform you know, what the Mindfulness for Life project has become. So it has been kind of a non-negotiable part of it. They had to be central to it. One of my friends that come to our group, he, he's learned a lot and he's so much calmer now. It also helps the staff as well because the staff are actually learning how to interact with the person as well. Isn't that really cool? Isn't that it is, it's really nice because it's changed someone's life and it hasn't really cost anything really. From a support worker's point of view, uh, three and a half years ago we were concerned about Michael's well-being. From the very first day of Michael coming here, we noticed a massive change in him. In the fact that he wasn't getting angry anymore, he was getting, uh, he was a lot happier, he was accepting things for what they were, which he didn't do before. Um, and he's just a lot more like Michael, than he should be. And I think, Three years down the line, I think Michael and Susie um, and Anthony have all really found their voice. Yes. I think they're all really, they're much more confident to say, oh no, that doesn't work. So I think that's had a massive impact on what we do. And there's something very magic about, you know, how Susie and, and Anthony and, and, and Michael's presence seems to um, give people the, the message that, that you too can, can be leading this, you can, too can be more active. By helping people develop their own skills and techniques, it's meant that um, health services perhaps haven't been drawn on as much um, as they might have been in the past. So then everybody's a winner, and they? You know, the health and social care system is because we've only got a limited amount of resource to go around. But more important than that, that the person themselves is being supported to stay well. It makes some people feel proud that people with learning disabilities can actually do this. You know, I mean, he could be delivering this training and so could all the other people that come on the course because they get, they get the experience and they're dead clever. People are so clever and um, but we don't notice that until we're actually doing things like this and, and it's special, isn't it?